RPG Maker. It's certainly one of the engines of all time. If I had to describe using it in just a few words, it would have to be... It makes simple things even simpler, but it also makes complicated things even more complicated. Let me explain. First off, what is RPG Maker? Well, it's a series of game engines made by a couple of Japanese companies. There's been quite a few versions over the years, the latest one being RPG Maker MZ, and a lot of popular indie games have come from these engines in the past two decades. One thing that's interesting is that some of RPG Maker's most popular games don't even use any battle system, instead focusing on story and exploration. So even if you don't want to make an RPG game with turn-based combat, RPG Maker might still be for you. In fact, RPG Maker is often known for its many horror games. And if not horror, then at the very least really dark in some way. Really, a lot of RPG Maker games are just... weird. Like, some of them are abstract and surreal, but then others are just, uh... What the anyway, enough about the games, let's talk about the engine. Normally, in any other engine, when you create a new blank project, you start from nothing, and you have to code the whole game yourself. But in RPG Maker, when you create a new project, it basically gives you an existing game that's already fully coded for you, and all you have to do is put content into it. So in a way, RPG Maker is kinda like modding. In other words, RPG Maker is like Mario Maker, if Mario Maker allowed you to do this. Time to take a piss. Uh. <laughs> oh no! Okay, so using RPG Maker is separated into two parts, the map screen and the database. The database is where you'll change the data of the game. So the party members, items, weapons, skills, armors, enemies, and many other settings. This is where you'll add and edit all of those things. Then, on the map screen, this is where you'll make the maps for your game. This is also where you'll make events. So that's anything from an NPC, to a door, a treasure chest, a cutscene, anything that may require logic. In the event editor, instead of writing code, you'll use event commands. This is how you do things like show text, give items, change stats, change the map, play music or a sound, start a battle, control logic, etc. All very simple and convenient. This is what I meant by it makes simple things even simpler. Next up, let's discuss the price. RPG Maker is $80 USD, but it's actually often on sale on Steam. And if you're not sure if you want to buy it, you can download one of the free trials. And by the way, the free trial is exactly just like the full version, except for the time limit. Now, when you get RPG Maker, not only are you getting the engine, you're also getting access to a huge library of assets. Literally hundreds of sprites and sound files. And when you buy the engine, you get a license that gives you the rights to do basically anything you want with the assets. This means that you are allowed to make money from a game made entirely from RPG Maker assets. Well, okay, there's a catch. While you can technically make money from a game like that, there's a bit of a stigma in the RPG Maker community for games that use the stock assets. It's basically an instant big red flag on your game. Of course, you can make a good game with the default assets, but getting your game out there will be difficult. However, if you're just a beginner trying to learn game dev, don't worry about any of that, okay? Just use whatever asset you want to use and share your game with your friends and family. Speaking of which, here is why I think RPG Maker is a great starting point for beginners. First off, one of the biggest hurdles for new game devs is how many new skills you need to learn if you want to make a game. You gotta learn coding, art, music, that's a lot at the same time. But thankfully, RPG Maker has got you covered for all three of those things. And while it may not teach you how to code, it will teach you about game design, map design, storytelling, character writing, world building, pacing, balancing, and a little bit of programming logic. And also, to be honest, I'm speaking from experience here. 
I've tried and failed to learn game dev many times as a kid, but RPG Maker is what allowed me to finally break through and make my very first game. Huh, maybe I can make a video on it. Anyway, if you want a tip to learn RPG Maker, I suggest you create a new project and just do whatever. Change random settings and add dumb stuff that'll make you laugh. That's how I got started. But, okay, what if you're not a complete beginner to game dev and you want your game to be taken seriously? Well, thankfully, there's a very simple solution. Plugins. Plugins are little script files that you can quickly download and put in your project. They can make a wide variety of changes and additions to your game, such as adding dynamic lighting, customizing menus and UI elements, adding new game mechanics to the overworld and battle screens, and overall just letting you have a lot of control over really specific things that RPG Maker wouldn't normally let you customize. Thanks to RPG Maker's plugin developer community, there are tons of plugins out there that you can use for free. That's how you can turn your game from something that feels like it was made in RPG Maker into something that doesn't. But what if that's still not good enough for you? What if you wanted to have complete control? Well, you're in luck, because RPG Maker is what I like to call open source-ish. So like, the program itself, the RPG Maker editor, is not open source. But you do have full access to the code that your game runs on. Which means that you are able to change literally anything you want. But at that point it's recommended you just make your own plugin instead. Oh yeah, and if there's something about a plugin that's bothering you, you can just go into the code and change it yourself. I've done that plenty of times. Additionally, you can also use code inside of events. Of course, as long as you just so happen to know the code equivalent of the event command. You gotta keep in mind, RPG Maker was designed as a codeless engine first and foremost. So when you wanna do something that requires code, it's not always gonna be easy. Usually, in any other engine, adding something is easy. Since you're working with your own code, you know how it works, because you're the one who made it. But with RPG Maker, you're working with a pre-made game. So when you want to change something, you need to go through that pre-made code and learn what it does, learn how it works, learn the documentation, and if your code does work, you have to worry about compatibility with other plugins, performance issues, or accidentally breaking something else. This is what I meant when I said it makes complicated things even more complicated. But once you've mastered RPG Maker, you can make some truly awesome stuff, like one-shots fourth wall breaking game mechanics and Omori's unique battle system and UI animations. So all in all, I think this engine is great for absolute beginners. And at the same time, if you know what you're doing, you can create some super unique experiences that people will remember. But if you're overambitious, the engine might feel frustrating to use from time to time. So, in conclusion, if I had to describe using RPG Maker in one full long sentence, it would have to be... Yeah, it's alright.